Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and today we're doing a hands-on review on the Lenovo Idea Centra Y700 gaming desktop. I'm super excited, so let's get to it. All right, guys, so let's get down to the specifications on the Lenovo Idea Centra Y700. It's running a 2.70 gigahertz, sixth generation quad-core Intel i5 processor. It comes with eight gigs of WDR4 memory, but you can upgrade it up to 16 gigs, which is the max. It comes with two storage devices. Your primary storage device is 120 gig solid state drive, and your secondary hard drive is a SATA 3 one terabyte. For your graphics processor, it comes with an NVIDIA GTX 960 two gig graphics card. Your primary operating system is Windows 10 64 bit home edition. All right guys, so let's take a closer look at the desktop. So the desktop has a lot of ports and so let's take care of the front part. So we have here your memory card. We have one, two, three, four USB ports. Two of them is already 3.0. Uh, the first one right here on this side is actually a uh, OTG on a go port, which you can actually charge devices. Your headphone jack and as well as your mic jack. At the very top, you have your power button, which is really strange. I'm so used to old school with the power button being at the actually at the front of the tower. And then right here, we have two bays. They give you two bays so you can insert a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM drive. All right, guys, so let's take a closer look at the back part of the desktop. So starting from the top, we actually have one, two USB ports. Uh, we have a hybrid PS2 port, which is the old school port for keyboards and mouse. Uh, this is really strange to actually see this. Uh, right here covered up is an HDMI. Uh, this right here is your VGA. We have another one, two, uh, 2.0 USB ports. We have two more additional 3.0 ports. We have our Ethernet port. We have our SPDIF uh, port right here. We have our, these, well, these additional ports right here is for your audio system. So if you have like a surround sound system, this is where you start plugging your stuff right here. The green and the blue one is for outputting audio. The pink one right here is actually hooking up a mono uh, mic system. And underneath here, we basically have our NVIDIA GTX 962 gig graphics. This one has one, two DVI ports. Right next to this one, it uh, actually has one HDMI port and a display port. And at the very bottom, you have your 300 watt power supply that will power the desktop up. Now, no gaming system is completed without an awesome keyboard and an awesome mouse. Now, the Lenovo Idea Center Y700 comes with the keyboard K600 and the Lenovo Mouse M600. The Lenovo M600 gaming mouse provides a greater control over your games with customizable nine programmable buttons, adjustable DPI settings for pinpoint accuracy, and a variable weight system for maximum economics. For the K600 keyboard, they highlight the primary keys to allow you to play games, which is the WASD, as well as the directional keys. These two accessories are a must if you want to continue playing like a legend within the gaming world. All right, guys, so let's take a closer look on the Y700 from Lenovo. So I open this bad boy up and let's just take a little quick look at what's inside. So we got the 300 watt power supply in the bottom right here, which is also customizable, meaning that you could replace it to support whatever graphics card you want to insert into this. Uh, because I think the max standard card that you could put is the NVIDIA GTX 960. But if you want something higher and more powerful, you could use it. But make sure that you do change the power supply and that the power supply gives enough energy to the entire machine as well as the graphics processor. It looks like at the top right here, you probably can't see it, but you could add another, uh, I believe this looks like a 15 millimeter fan, uh, which is awesome. It looks like you do have room to probably put a cooling system. Uh, these, this is actually your hard drive rack right here on the side. This is your solid state drive, which is 120 gigs, and your one terabyte SATA 3. Uh, you have one extra bay that you can add an additional SATA 3 or a solid state drive right here. Uh, the only thing is you got to make sure that you purchased uh, the cradle. Uh, you can also put another additional hard drive here as well. Up top here, this is where you insert your DVDs or CD-ROM drives. Right here in the middle is your memory slots. You have two additional memory slots. Again, uh, by default, when you purchase this retail, uh, you get eight gigs. 
but you are able to upgrade it to 16 gigs. That's the max for this machine, which is a little disappointing for me. Uh, it'd have been awesome, it'd have been 32, it'd have been great. All right guys, so let's take a look at the front panel. So let's take the bezel out. Ooh, beautiful. <laughs> so again, it comes with, I think this is a standard 15 or 20 millimeter fan, which is beautiful. It does not light up, it's okay. Uh, but you are able to place another additional fan right here in the bottom to keep at least your hard drives cool. Uh, but to tell you the fact, these two uh, fans that are built in within this machine will keep the fan cool with no problem. Uh, you have your two bays right here. This right here comes with a DVD um, recordable, writable uh, drive, but you could put an additional one. And But uh, the front panel itself looks awesome and very customizable as well. Now with all my hands-on reviews that I do with you guys, laptops, desktops, I like to do the boot time test. So the boot time test, I have my iPhone right here with the stopwatch app, and I'm gonna press the power button on the Lenovo Y700, and let's see how fast it boots to the operating system. So let's click on start and go. So automatically I hear those two beautiful fans that are inside the desktop cooling everything off right away. I, I just love it. I love the way they lights up, especially the Y, because this is the Y series gaming desktop. It's, it's just amazing. It'd have been awesome if they had more LCDs lighting everything up. But again, you could probably customize that uh, later on in the future. So right now we are in 26, 27, and we're already in the desktop. And I would say it takes about 27 seconds. I stopped it on 31. Uh, but that's pretty fast for the boot time. Again, your primary operating system is installed on the so solid state drive, which is 120 gigs. Then you have a SATA 3 one terabyte hard drive. This is where you store all your miscellaneous stuff like your programs, your games, your photos. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the benchmark numbers. So I ran 3D Mark, and as you can see, the Fire Strike high performance gaming PC gave it 6264. Uh, the Skydiver, which is for gaming laptops and mid-range PCs, gave it 17,609. The Cloud Gate, which is a basic notebook and home PC, gave it 15,086. And this last test, which is basically for smartphones and tablets, gave it a whopping 134,797, which it's, I'm, I'm not surprised. I also ran Geekbench as a benchmark, and I actually ran the 64. And for 64, it gave it a whopping 3601 for a single core. And for multi-core score, it gave it 11,020. For 86-bit testing, uh, it actually gave it 3353 for a single core. And for multi-core, it gave it 10,436. For the GPU test, I actually ran Heaven. And uh, the Heaven benchmark frames per second, 31.5. Gave it a score of 794. The minimum fr frames per second is 7.4, and the max frames per second for the GPU is actually 68.0. Overall, the benchmark numbers just basically says that this machine is capable of handling high tense graphics with gaming as well as day-to-day -day work stuff. So on my last benchmark test, I actually ran Signbench 315, which is a rendering software. Uh, if you're a person that used 3D Max or Maya to do renderings like animation and stuff, you want to see if your machine is capable of handling that stuff. So let's look at the program. So let's run an OpenGL and see how fast the performance is. It looks like the 2.72 gigahertz GeForce GTX 960, it's on its game on top of other graphics cards right here. The GTX 960 graphics card is being compared by Quadro K4000M, uh, Quadro 4000, a GeForce GTX 460. These are the graphics cards that it's being compared and it's on top of its game on OpenGL rendering. So let's actually test out the CPU and then the CPU single core. So let's run this one first. Okay, so it looks like the CPU didn't do so great. Again, we're running a 2.70-72 gigahertz Intel Core i5 processor, which is actually the sixth generation. And uh, it's being compared with some high-end processor. And it's actually on the six and seventh ranking, which is, that's not, not too great. Uh, so let's actually do a CPU single core run and see what's the score on that one.
All right, guys. So on the CPU single core, it did okay. It, it topped to three and top five from its uh, ranking. But again, the Intel Core i7 447K CPU running a 4.40 gigahertz is number one. But it's it's up there. It's not that bad for its single core rendering. All right. So next on my hands-on testing is all about multimedia. So. Let's take a look. So we have iTunes and we have Handbrake and I also have Adobe Premiere. So on iTunes, I have about 10 to 11 uh, audio files that I like to convert to AAC version. And on my Handbrake, I have a MP4 that I like to convert into an MKV. This MKV file is gonna be dropped inside the temp folder, which is nothing in here. So let's actually select all this right here. Right click on this and we are going to create a AAC version. We are also going to run our handbrake, start at start time, and see how fast all that stuff will process. Okay, so it looks like it took about a minute and 38 seconds to convert 10 MP3s to AAC version. And for handbrake, if I was paying attention to the timer, I think it took about 38 seconds or so to complete uh, the MP4 to MKV. Now the MP4, if we look at the properties, let's take a look at the properties, was about 30.1 megabytes, which wasn't a large file. So let's close all this up. And on this one, we're doing a video convert. So I actually took some footage on my iPhone 6 Plus. This is 4K, 30 frames per second. So I wanna show you guys right now. It's about a minute long, a minute and 46 minutes long. It is 4K with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. And uh, I'm gonna render this bad boy and see how fast it will work under the Y700 processor. So let's go to File, Export, Media. From here, I'm gonna do the format of H.264, which is the standard for YouTube. The output, I'm actually gonna drop it inside uh, my tent folder. And I'm going to say, save it. And let's do a high bit rate, so it's no standardized. I'm just gonna do the high bit rate and let's export and see how long it takes. Okay, so it looks like our rendering is completed, which is super awesome, it's right here. Wow. So it took roughly, I would say, about eight minutes to render a 4K. And, the, and it's only a minute and 46 seconds. So imagine a five minute 4K video. I would say maybe triple that to a little bit more, 20, 30 minutes rendering with the Y700, which is not that bad. Okay, the last test that I like to do during my image slash video multimedia processing is uh, taking a bunch of files, placing them into Photoshop, and then running an action and see how fast they will convert. Now I have a folder right here called Images, and within here I have a bunch of doubles, and it's about 120 images. Uh, I took these photos using the Galaxy S5, and uh, they're between about three to 2.45 megabytes uh, in size. So I'm gonna close this folder up, and we're gonna go inside our Photoshop. We're gonna go inside File, we're gonna go to Scripts, Image Processor. We're gonna select our image folder within our desktop. And we are actually going to select a different folder to drop all our converts. So let's do a temp folder here. We're gonna drop it in there. Uh, we want to do a quality of 12. And we're gonna run a command of, I like to do the quadrant colors. And we're gonna actually have our little timer right here. And we're gonna do run and start. All right, guys, so our image processing is completed. It took about, I would say, four minutes. So I'm gonna exit out of here, and I'm gonna close out Photoshop, and let's go inside our temp folder. And this is our JPEG, and look at all this right here. So this is our quadrant color. All right, guys, so we went over a lot of stuff with the Lenovo Idea Center Y700. We did the specifications, we did the boot time, we even looked inside of it. We did image, video, and, uh, audio processing. My overall impressions for the Y700 is it is awesome. Uh, it's very customizable. It's great for the price. You could get this right here, bare bone, with eight gigs, with the i5 processor, with the solid state drive, and a SATA 3 drive, and with the NVIDIA GTX 960 two gigs graphics processor for only $1,000.
Plus, overall, in the future, you're able to upgrade your graphics processor. Just make sure you buy the accurate and perfect power supply to power all the components as well as to power the graphics processor. Again, if you guys are starting into the gaming world, this is a great standard beginning desktop. It's great for the price. Uh, it's great for in the future for customizing it and hyping it up even more. I would definitely tell you go for it. The only downside about the Y700 is that it, it's only maxed out to 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, again, if you're buying the retail $1,000, it's only 8 gigs. You could upgrade it to 16 gigs, but you know, I would like to have even more. Uh, 32 gigs would have been great, but 16 gigs, uh, it's okay for me. Uh, it has enough ports for you to plug everything that you need. Uh, I mean, it's overall, it's a great gaming desktop. Hopefully you guys enjoy this hands-on review. If you have any comments or concerns, leave them at the bottom of the video. And don't forget about hitting that like button because it does support the Lenovo Idea Center Y700 gaming desktop. And I'll catch you guys on the next hands-on review. Peace out.